Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox, and thanks for logging on. If you love what you see, everything is for sale. We're waking up with watches and starting our weekend. To inquire about the prices of watches whose prices are not listed in the description, reach out to me, tmaso at thewatchbox.com. We're always looking to build inventory, so if you wish to buy, trade, or sell, tmaso at thewatchbox.com. We pay fast, we pay cash. We will pay cash for your entire collection of watches with no upper limit on value paid. Your online concierge to buy, trade, or sell is tmaso at thewatchbox.com. I promised you a Vacheron Constantin overseas self-winding, and here it is. A watch that still represents good value. It's no longer undiscovered. This is a timepiece that's on a lot of radars as people realize that the Patek Philippe Nautilus and the Audemars Piguet Royal Oak are not the only game in town. Now, the overseas was last redesigned for 2016 when the third generation watch you see here came out, meaning it's still above and beyond what you get on the competitors in terms of features. Let's start with the basics. It is 41 millimeters in diameter in stainless steel. I'm going to remove my beloved Swatch System 51 here and give you a wrist shot. So you can see what this 41 looks like on my wrist of 16 centimeters in circumference. Pop and open the clasp, which is double deployant. We throw it on my wrist and find it's an outstanding fit. The watch is extremely comfortable with a lovely broad tonneau shape that arcs across the wrist. You probably need a wrist of 15 centimeters circumference or larger to wear this well, but take note, it is very flat and will fit easily underneath the cuff. Now, if you want to wear it on a smaller wrist than 15 centimeters circumference, it's got a built-in cheat sheet, so you can curb the distance across the wrist by fitting one of two accessory straps that come with this watch. It actually comes with a blue leather and a blue rubber strap with a separate steel deployant clasp to use those straps and there's a quick switch system built into the lugs so you can easily remove the bracelet or the strap. If you want to wear it on a smaller wrist use one of the straps that's the solution. Now the bracelet is a wonderfully clever piece as you can see the Vacheron quick switch system allows me to rapidly swap bracelets and straps, but there's a lot of thought that goes into this bracelet beyond the quick switch system. You can see every individual link on both sides of the bracelet is removable, so you're going to get great sizing and outstanding fit. We also have a wonderful break between the polished and the satinated surfaces. The hand finishing of this bracelet is superb. Let's say you're between sizes. Well, you have a 1.5 millimeter tool-free pull-out push-in adjustment on each side of the bracelet. So you have a lot of customizable tunability and you can see they even added a half link in there. So you're guaranteed to get the right fit. Now taking a look at the case back, for the first time, the third generation overseas includes a display case back and a manufacturer movement. This is caliber 5100, twin mainspring barrels, automatic winding, 60 hour power reserve, hand finished, and I mean quadruply finished, 22 karat winding mass, Geneva Hallmark movement, but also Geneva Hallmark watch. The stamp is on both. And as you can see, it is beautifully finished, leaving very little to be desired in terms of finery. It's also a broad movement, over 30 millimeters in diameter, so it perfectly fits the case back of this rather large watch. Now there is a paramagnetic ring around the movement which helps to channel magnetic field lines around the hairspring. The watch also features a screw down crown. It is 150 meters water resistant. The dial is gorgeous with a lovely blue lacquer on a black polished metallic base. And then we have white gold hands, Vacheron logo and indices. There is plenty of loom. You can see no shortage right there. This is a true sports watch, but it's also versatile enough, particularly on the bracelet or the leather strap, that you could very easily make this your formal companion. And you can see how easy it is to reassemble the bracelet. It is absolutely a cinch to attach one to the other and swap out. Let's say you want the original, the Royal Oak, as coined in 1972, and really the patient zero for the entire phenomenon of integrated bracelet steel hyper luxury sports watches. Now this model, the 15300, is a 39 millimeter automatic that was made from 2005 to 2011, and it has the size of the original Royal Oak, but with some running changes that make it a little bit more wearable than the Jumbo. A more robust clasp, a more heavily built bracelet, a 
more robust case with a screw down rather than push down crown and an in-house movement of modern architecture. Throwing it on my wrist, 16 centimeters circumference, you can see it wears well like the Vacheron, maybe a little bit more compact across the wrist than the Vacheron on its bracelet. And you can see that it is flat enough to fit underneath the cuff. The bracelet by itself takes nine to 11 hours to hand finish. And that's before we get to the case and the bezel. Now, what you're gonna note here is that this is an example of the watch in close to showroom condition. There is no reduction of the definition or the metal volume. This watch has either been professionally polished maybe once or never. And the condition is what really sets this example apart. Now it is a black grand tapisserie dial. It is the large hobnail as cut on a pantograph mimicry lathe, the device from the 19th century. We have white gold hexagonal bolts inside the steel rounded octagonal bezel. And that bezel was inspired in 1972 by a vintage diving helmet. Screw down crown, 50 meters water resistant, so it is surface swimmable. And we have on the reverse side, the Audemars Piguet manufactured caliber 3120 movement, which is rugged as it's been built for sports watches like the Offshore, but it's also fine as it features a nice combination of hand finishing and mechanical finishing in tandem with a 60 hour power reserve. Okay, let's say you wanna go back to the beginning, to the origin of the species, so to speak. You want this. This is a second A series Audemars Piguet Royal Oak 5402. So there were two A series. The first one launched in 1972, the second about two years after that. And these are collectively between the first and second A series, the first Royal Oak Jumbos, the first Royal Oaks of any kind. Now I had an extraordinarily early diamond dial 5402 on a previous program on this channel. That one is a first A series and it is much earlier than this one. Nevertheless, this is in the first 1300 Royal Oaks ever made and it's in better condition than that diamond dial watch I showed you before. So if you want the absolute oldest, that one's for you. If you want something that's a better match of historical integrity, and significance with condition, then you want this. So it's only 7.3 millimeters thick, and you can see that's down to the lack of a display case back on these 1970s watches, and the fact that it is all monoblock case construction, the mid case and the case back etched out of a single piece of steel. You can see here from the beginning, we had hexagonal white gold bolts in a steel bezel, and we have here the petite tapisserie. It is the smallest hobnail dial, and like the modern one, it is made on a pantograph. At the time, of course, it was done by Sternfrer, not Audemars Piguet. Audemars Piguet took that in-house in 2012. Sternfrer, by the way, the company founded by those Sterns of Patek Philippe once upon a time. The bracelet is in very good shape, and you can see it has the later clasp. So on the earliest A-series watches, this would be written out Audemars Piguet, and then internally you would see Gay Frere branding, as well as an age stamp inside the clasp. You don't have that here. The interior of the clasp is signed Audemars Piguet, and here the exterior uh, clamshell lock is signed AP. So you can see this is characteristic of the second A-series. Mechanically, they're identical. Both of them use the ultra-thin caliber 2121, originally designed by JLC for Patek, Audemars, and Vacheron, only ever used by those three brands, and used for the longest time by Audemars Piguet. It was only phased out this year on the Jumbo. Most folks prefer to have this JLC base with the original monoblock case. Getting it in a 5402 is just the icing on the cake. And of course, it's an easy wear on my 16 centimeter wrist. You have your choices though, if you want affordable options in this genre. And I believe that the best one is a 2022 launch, now available pre-owned. This is the Oris Pro Pilot X, similar in shape and bracelet profile to the 2019 Oris Big Crown Pro Pilot X. This is a more compact watch, a 12.1 millimeters thick and 39 millimeters in diameter in grade two titanium. That is case, bracelet, and clasp. It is very secure on the wrist and extremely comfortable to wear. Let's take a look at how it opens up. You have a lift lock system that unlatches the clasp. Throw it on the wrist. It looks good. It looks sharp. It's suitable for my wrist and a wrist that's even smaller. Now, there are three dials. This one's gray. There's also a coral red and a slate blue. You can see it is very low on the wrist. It's also reasonably constrained. It's not super thin across the wrist, but it's reasonably short across the wrist. I think you could wear this watch on a 13 and a half centimeter circumference wrist. Taking a look at the bracelet, it's grade two titanium, just like the case, and it's nicely made. As you can see, a bit of a surprise at this price point. There is a faceting between the links, both the large links and the shoulder links. Impressive attention to detail, as is the use of screw-fixed removable links in the bracelet, rather than the pin sleeves you'd expect at this price point. We have a knurling on the case back, as well as the bezel, as well as the crown. 
The dial is a matte media blasted gray. We do have the black version of Super Luminova, which while technically loom is kind of a barely there loom. The watch features hands that are brushed gray. So all of this anti-reflective and underneath the case back, the piece de resistance. This is the caliber 400. Five-day power reserve, 10-year warranty, 10-year service intervals. It is a masterpiece by Oris. And this 21-joule automatic winding two-barrel movement is accurate to minus three plus five seconds per day. It even has an anti-magnetic unlubricated silicon escapement, and these are tested to 2,250 Gauss. Remember, mil Gauss is 1,000 Gauss. This is tested to over 2,200 and still able to keep time to within 10 seconds per day. You'll also note some fun features like a media blasted set of bridges, and then we have a little rack and pinion fine adjustment mechanism with etacrons. These can be adjusted very, very, very precisely. They are impressive movements and exclusive to Oris. They also use a, a high beat rate, 28,800 vibrations per hour, so no gimmicks are used. No gimmicks like low beat rate are used to achieve that five-day power reserve. We have hacking seconds, and we have a quick set date. This is one of the best integrated bracelet sports watches you can buy at any price. Let's say you want something that's a little bit more fashion forward. Well, in that case, consider the Bell & Ross BR05 launched in 2019. It's a 40 millimeter integrated bracelet steel sports watch from the company that is based out of Paris, but manufactures in Switzerland. Now, obviously the BR05 draws a dial inspiration from the instrument watches that Bell & Ross is famous for making. And the remainder of the watch is drawn largely from the likes of the Nautilus and the Royal Oak. But it's well done and it's honestly priced. This is a great way to get into this style of watch without spending five figures. It's very flat on the wrist, extremely compact, just over 10 millimeters thick. Across the wrist, it's an easy wear and that's largely down to the fact that the bracelet is quite flexible. It'll pull straight down and then the lugs slope down steeply on the side. The watch is 100 meters water resistant and it's powered by a Salida SW300 doing business as the BR322. So it's an automatic winder with hacking seconds, a quick set date, and a 40 to 42 hour power reserve. Take a look at the case back. You can see that the movement is visible. It has a all gray custom finish executed by Salida for Bell & Ross. So you can see that well right there. And you can see that it's nicely made with the bracelet fixed to the case using screws and bars and a handsome combination of polish and satin all together a beautifully made watch at an honest price it has a sunburst metallic blue dial and no shortage of loom to the point that it is reminiscent of the instrument style watches as well as panerai a little bit okay still with the bracelet but more formal now this is a watch that's becoming a bit of a cult classic three forms of this now in white gold rose gold and yellow gold this is the rolex date 836 and this is the 128 238 in yellow gold 36 millimeters diamond paved dial the dial is made of solid gold the brilliant cut diamonds are set into the solid gold and then electrically graded that is laser graded gradient sapphires are used to create this diamond profile and when i say that they are laser graded i mean in order to get the consistency of gradient from one color to the next a scanner system evaluates and then the gem setting is done by hand so these gem set rolex watches are handmade they are the last truly handmade rolex watches inside the case double quick set automatic caliber 3255 70 hour power reserve twin lock crown 100 meters water resistant anti-magnetic shock resistant a certified chronometer and then tested beyond chronometer standards inside rolex to run no worse than minus two plus two seconds per day as a fully cased up watch we have the president bracelet here the three link design that originally launched with the day date back in the mid 1950s and traditionally this watch has been nicknamed the rolex president but the bracelet is properly named the rolex president we have the much loved crown clasp where the only visible partition point in the two sides of the bracelet is that five point coronet so this is a lovely watch a handsome handmade rolex the likes of which we rarely see so a very special piece for someone who who wants a traditional day date that is a little bit beyond the norm it's not easy to just go out and find these as volume is constrained by the rate rolex gem setters can work now here's a watch that i find silly but beguiling at 45 millimeters in black ceramic with a titanium inner case and top and bottom sapphires this watch is not designed to be pretentious or haughty this is a 
timepiece for those who just enjoy the pleasure of a machine brought from the inside out. If you loved Meccano or a Rector set as a kid, this Hublot Big Bang Mecca 10 Blue Ceramic is exactly what you had in mind. Now, the original version of the Mecca 10 launched at Basel World 2016, and the idea here is that we have a movement that looks like Meccano or a Rector set. So you have two enormous mainspring barrels. This is manual wind, manufactured caliber 1201. You have 10 days of power reserve. And you can see the barrels are open, so you can see the mainsprings coiled. Now turn it over, and you can see we have not one, but two power reserve indicators driven by a rack and pinion system. Let me explain. So at the top of the dial, you can see driven off the upper barrel, we have this rack and pinion, so you could see the rack with its teeth, and then the pinion set within. Now you could see that there's also a meshing between this wheel and the outer teeth of the rack. So this is a power reserve indicator. Note little blued H-shaped Hublot screws in there. This will turn red when you have 48 hours of power reserve or less remaining. And then we have a second power reserve geared to the first that has a full 10 days. So this will tell you where you are 1 through 10, this will turn red when you're down to 48 hours remaining. Now, all of this is 100 meters water resistant and in blue ceramic, extremely scratch resistant. You'll also note that Hublot went for a differentiating set of uh, finishes on the blue ceramic as we have both polish and media blasting, and it's quite handsome. Now, the strap is an Hublot rubber piece, as you can see fusion, the way they like to say, of blue and black, and we have a little push-button release system for the strap, so you'll find an army of options from Hublot that you can use to change the look of this watch, and just like a seat belt on a car, you simply stick it right back in. We have a clasp. It's made out of a combination of black titanium and black ceramic, and the watch, though 45 millimeters and quite large, being ceramic, sapphire, and titanium, it is very light on the wrist. So I could wear this, but please, be advised, the look is going to be enormous. That's the idea with Hublot. It's supposed to be a big brash watch. It is a Lamborghini Urus for your wrist. It is a Bentley Bentayga or a Rolls-Royce Cullinan. Discretion is not the point. It's purely for the love of the machine that you wear it. Now, I will say this, being highly water resistant, scratch resistant, and well loomed, it is a watch you could use all the time. There's no doubt about that, provided you've got the persona and the wrist for it. A lot of folks don't realize that there are GMT Masters and there are GMT Master Twos. And in the past, I've had clients call me up and ask how to set the second time zone on their GMT Master. And invariably, it's a 1675 or a 6542 or a, in this case, 16700, a real GMT Master as launched for Pan Am pilots back in late 1954. Now, the thing about a GMT Master as opposed to a Master II is that you set the watch to Greenwich Mean Time and then presumably as a pilot, you use the GMT offset to turn the bezel clockwise or counterclockwise to read the airport arrival time against the 24-hour hand on the bezel. So the original GMT Master launched in 54, that was the 6542 or the Pussy Galore as it's sometimes known. It would have had the blue and the red bezel, sometimes known as the Pepsi. The idea was to mark the difference between day and night. So you read your arrival airport time on the bezel, not the dial, and you use the 24-hour hand as reference. And the most conventional way to do this is to set that 24-hour hand to Greenwich Mean Time. Now from 1988 to 1999, the last of the original original single time zone GMT masters were made. And once more, by single time zone, I mean the 12 hour hand and the 24 hour hand are permanently geared together so you can't set them separately. So this model 16700 was made for that span from 88 to 99, the last GMT master. And it's got some advantages to it. First, it's a lot thinner than a master two at under 12 millimeters thick. It's also exceptionally rare as most people given the option between the two bought the master two. Finally, it's also worth mentioning that it has a feature you don't find on the Master 2s, which is, and let me just make sure we're not in the day change danger zone here, and we were, which is the fact that this watch 
has a conventional quick set, something you don't find on a standard GMT Master II these days. Uh, so this movement 3175 was only ever used in this reference. So there's a lot about the 16700 that is extremely unconventional. Take a quick look. This watch features a Rolex service replacement Luminova dial. It is correct Rolex spec, but originally this watch, which I believe is an X series, would have been built, yes, it's an X series, it would have been built with a tritium dial. This watch at some point went back to Rolex service and they used a Luminova dial. So condition is very good but because of the dial originality. I consider this to be an outstandingly preserved daily driver rather than a museum piece to sequester to the safe. So if you want a vintage Rolex with real collectability that you're not afraid to wear, this is a great option for you. Now, let's say you're like me and you hate scratches. Well, this right here is the Blanc Pat. Ocean Commitment 2, launched in 2016. You can see this is a blue ceramic bathyscaphe chronograph. It is a limited edition of 250 pieces. The bathyscaphe chrono is part of the extended 50 fathoms family, all in ceramic. It's 43.2 millimeters, but because it is ceramic and it's got sapphires on both sides, it's a very light watch. Ceramic is great because it's light, it's hypoallergenic, and it's almost impervious to scratches. As you can see, there is nary a mark on this watch, even though the Ocean Commitment 2 came out six years ago. Now, the watch includes a chronograph, which is one of the best on the market, Let's take a listen to the bezel. It also has a nice 120 click bezel. And let me clean the fingerprints off this crystal for you. It has a nice 120 click bezel that has a positive feel and can be placed with precision when read against the hybrid baton and syringe minute hand. Now you also have the chronograph, which is a super high beat rate, so 10 beats per second like an El Primero. It's also a flyback standard, so you can reset and restart with just to push the trigger. The watch is exceptionally well loomed and it features 300 meter water resistance, caliber F385 on the reverse side, you can see it's beautifully finished with mirrored anglage a mile wide on the edge of every bridge, satination on the wheels, a triple finished rotor. You can also see that all of the screw heads are black polished with chamfered slots and circumference. The beveling is exceptionally broad and mirrored on these bridges. And there's a lovely spiral graining that's drawn out across the bridge rather than Cote de Genève, which would look out of place on such a modern watch. It's adjusted in six positions, one more than a standard chronometer. Of course, you can see the column wheel in action and the watch uses a vertical clutch so there's no jump or stagger to the chronograph seconds hand. It always starts smoothly without play. There's hacking seconds, there's a quick set date, and there is a balance mounted on a full dual anchored bridge with a free sprung index for shock tolerance and an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. So this watch is water resistant, shock resistant, and anti-magnetic. You can see that the driving wheel adjacent to the chronograph bridge, which is a little bit buried here, but the driving wheel for the chronograph has spokes in the shape of the Lamborghini Aventador's standard wheel, and that was a nod to Blancpain's long-running association with Lamborghini. Everything about this watch is superb, including the fit. As big as it is, it wears easy, and you can see on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it's large, but it fits. It's not super broad across the wrist, and you can see that well here. We'll zoom out a little bit, because I'm actually a bigger guy than I often appear to be in these uh, videos. You can see that my hand is actually Actually quite large and my wrist is quite large relative to the watch. So before you jump to the conclusion that this might be too big for you, keep in mind that it wears just fine on me. And again, it's made of very light materials. We also have attention to detail in the form of a full ceramic pin and buckle. Normally this is going to be some sort of blackened steel or titanium on a ceramic watch. Because we're dealing with Swatch Group here and they have the wherewithal to make small ceramic pieces, uh, we get a ceramic component right here. And that's nice because it deforms and defaces less than metal would. Everything about this watch is appealing from its durability to its aesthetic to its movement, which is beautifully hand finished to a higher standard than you'll find on, for example, Audemars Piguet Royal Oak offshore diving chronographs. And this is only made a few kilometers away from AP Advantage Blanc Pan. Okay, before we go crazy with Patek Philippe, let's talk about a David Kondo 1740 piece unique. Kondo launched his first own brand watch in 2017, the first watch made under his own name, but he's been working on haute horlogerie for 20 plus years as he originally designed minute repeaters and grand sonnerie watches for Gégère Le Coult. later did tourbillon watches for Fonderie 47, where he 
helped to repurpose parts of AK-47 for a charity benefit watch, and then also for Baudelet, where he cut his teeth on creation of stepped drivetrains for watches that were not perfectly flat. Well, in 2017, he launched the 1740 First 8, and this is a piece unique in the image of that watch. So, we have a mother-of-pearl primary dial, we have a bronze case, and then we have a flying tourbillon. We're going to get a little bit closer and take a look here. The flying tourbillon features a fired blue bridge, and it features no upper bridge to block your view. So we have this cage. It's properly not described as a bridge, but a tourbillon cage. And inside, we have a balance and escapement of David Kundo's own design, which means he didn't just buy these parts, he engineered them. He is both watchmaker and engineer, and a member of the AHCI, which is the group of high-end independent watchmakers that includes F.P. Jorn, Philippe Dufour, for Carrie Voudelain and Marco Long and many, many other luminaries. We have a free sprung balance adjusted in six positions with an overcoil hairspring. The movement itself, if you look carefully, you can see that the dial is actually slightly inclined like this. So steps are used to transmit the energy from the barrel up the slope to the tourbillon, which is then itself angled at 30 degrees. The idea being to better, better adapt the tourbillon as an instrument of precision to a wristwatch format. Manual wind, 55 hour power reserve. You can see there's a power reserve indicator. We have a lovely black lacquer dial adjacent. And you can see that underneath the tourbillon, there's a sort of gold plate that serves as the toothed base of the entire assembly. And that features the technical specifications, things like lift angle that a master watchmaker would need down the road in order to restore or service the watch after David Kondo is gone. So this watch is designed for the long haul. Now the timepiece includes a number of patented elements. Three patents were issued for the creation of this watch, one of which is for the 31-piece Magic Crown. The Magic Crown is a spring-loaded device designed to protect the crown from impact or shearing, and it can be used to set the watch or wind the watch. And of course, once it's done, you hide it away. There are a couple of different detents, and you generally have to move through several of them as it goes up and down. But it's a brilliant system that's a lot of fun to use. You can see the logo of David Kondo the bear here and here. He works out of the Valet de Joux. He is a third generation watchmaker. His godfather is Philippe Dufour, and he works out of a converted barn on an old family property where he has a small number of artisans working under him, and they make 12 to 18 watches a year. Now you can see a little bit of gold garnishing has been used on this dial, and when you flip the watch, you can see that where there's normally a number plate for these watches, it's one of one, so I, no need to cover the serial number here, uh, but you could see, I'm sorry about all these fingerprints, you could see that the number plate just has a diamond set within it, and the number plate is made of solid gold. You could see we have polished and media blasted grade 5 titanium bridges, as the movement itself is made of titanium and then immaculately finished. It includes 23 interior angles, some of which you can see here, and here, and here, and here, and here, and here. There are many of them. They're difficult to finish individually, but by the dozen, like this, almost unheard of. You can see Kendo's signature on the reverse side and a little gold plate celebrating Le Solia, the small town in the Vallée du Joux, where he practices. The watch is 43 millimeters in diameter by about 12.5 millimeters thick and 52.9 millimeters from lug to lug, but it's a fairly easy watch to wear. The watch is large, but it's not overbearing. You can see it's fairly flat and the lugs are downward swept, so they sort of arc around my wrist. There's no real issue here. If your wrist is 16 centimeters circumference or larger, you could wear this watch quite well. And it does include a deployant clasp that features twin trigger release and double deployant action. As you can see, this is there to make it easier to avoid dropping your watch while donning it or removing it. We have another one of those gold marquee plates. A very cool watch from a superb watchmaker and an up-and-coming name in high horology. This is the David Kendo 1740 Piece Unique. All right, let's see if we can guess this one from the loom shot alone. I think some of you can. Do you know? But do you know which version? Right here, launched in 2019, we have the Patek Philippe Aquanaut. 
5168G010. So this is the 42.2 millimeter white gold case that originally came out in 2017 with a khaki green dial and matching composite strap. Of course, that's Patek's term for it. I call it rubber. It's a fun watch. Being 120 meters water resistant, beautifully loomed and automatic winding on a rubber strap, this is a fantastic haute horlogerie sports watch. It's large, but it's not too large. As you can see on my wrist, it's a fairly good fit. It's flat, it's easy to fit under a cuff, and although it's big, it's not huge, and the lugs come nowhere near the edge of my wrist. Given a choice between a 5167 and this, I would probably opt for this. Legibility is outstanding. It features a caliber 324, which courtesy of its silicon hairspring is anti-magnetic and courtesy of a number of refinements is guaranteed from the Patek factory to run no worse than minus three plus two seconds per day. It has a full white gold deployant clasp. Everything on this watch is high grade. But that said, I'm more of a dress watch guy. Something like this is a fantastic way to get into the Calatrava this year the 90th anniversary of the Patek Philippe Calatrava collection. So this is the 5296. It's a watch that is made of white gold, 38 millimeters in diameter. It's the 5296G010. So a three-hand center second integrated lug date Calatrava. There are several different styles in this family. You can see that the hands as well as the indices are white gold and faceted. The watch is quite slim. Automatic winding. It features a caliber. 324, the same as we would have seen in the Aquanaut with the same capabilities. And the watch is wonderfully comfortable, being only about 47 millimeters from lug to lug. A man can wear this, a woman can wear it. It's a little bit larger as a woman's watch, but as a man's watch, it's right in the sweet spot of 37 to 39 millimeters. It's really emerging as the standard for dress watches in 2022. And a fantastic way to get into the foremost brand in high horology. I like dress watches, but I love dress complications, and that's what we have right here with this uh, Patek Philippe 5205G-13. This model came out in 2018. There's a lot to love. First, you never see this online, but if you turn this case over, you can see that the bezel is concave, the lugs are evacuated, they're even hollow, giving it a wonderful grace and complexity that's entirely lacking if you just look at photos like this. Now, the dial is blue, but it's a gradient blue, so light at the center, darker at the edge. It uses a sector dial design, but the sectors are all formed from metal, as we have polished metal chapter rings, and then set across them, we have faceted white gold hour indices with a dimple-style seconds and minutes track outboard. This is a moon phase and an annual calendar. So you have the day, the date, and the month, American style, aperture displays, which I prefer to the pointer style displays. And the watch only needs to be adjusted once a year in the jump from February to March. Now, if we were to shut everything down, take a look, another surprise, we have a little bit of loom here, and we can read this watch in the dark. Now, it is 40 millimeters in diameter, but it's about 49 millimeters from lug to lug, so it's got a rather large uh, fit and feel on the wrist. Now, it's also powered by the Caliber 324. We've seen several takes on the 324 here. Take note, this is the later or I should say latest version of the 324 with six position adjustment, the Patek Philippe seal, and the silicon hairspring. All those features together are what underpin Patek Philippe's declaration that these watches run to minus three plus two seconds per 24 hours. You have to have all those features in tandem before Patek makes a declaration. Now on the wrist, it wears easily. I could very easily live with this as my next and only watch. A wonderful piece. Uh, you can just see how easily it wears and how comfortably it fits underneath a sleeve. As a dress watch, it's superb, but with loom, a dark dial, a white metal, and automatic winding, it's a little bit sporty as well. This is an all-arounder and a great candidate to be your one watch, your only watch, even your last watch. One of the best modern Patek companies applications. Although the 5205 came out in 2010, this model in 2018, in my opinion, perfected the type. Okay, the big piece. In 2001, Patek Philippe launched its most complicated ever wristwatch, the 5002P Sky Moon Tourbillon. Now, initially it was available in platinum and it was available in rose gold. What we have right here is the 5002P. So it is 42.8 millimeters in diameter. We'll get a little bit closer. Sorry, I covered up the dial. Part of the serial number is visible here and 
or protecting the identities of previous owners. So you can see that there's guilloche on the dial creating the Calatrava cross pattern. We have an age of the moon indicator. We have a perpetual calendar. If you look carefully, you can see there's a little track for the retrograde date. Now Patek claims that this watch, its most complicated ever wristwatch, had 12 complications. Two to three were made each year from 2001 to 2013 when it was replaced by the 6002. Now, you may note there's a lot more going on because not only do we have this perpetual calendar and retrograde with age of the moon, but on the reverse side, we have a sky chart showing the sky at the time indicated over the northern hemisphere. It also gives us the position and phase of the moon, and we have hands... By the way, we've got two sets of crowns, and I'll show you why. One set of crowns adjusts the front of the watch, the dial on the front, and then the other set adjusts the reverse side. And you can see on the reverse side, we have hands that move in sync with sidereal time. So sidereal time marks one complete rotation of the Earth, so one meridian past a star two times. And a sidereal day is the precise way of measuring a day, whereas the time on the dial is going to be mean solar time. What's the difference? Well, mean solar time works in 24-hour cycles, whereas sidereal time gives you a day with a length of 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4.1 seconds. So we have two rotations of this hour hand around the dial every 23 hours, 56 minutes, and 4.1 seconds. And you can see at different times in the night, you will see different parts of the sky. And this little cordon shows you what will be over your head in Northern Hemisphere at any given time. So that's how that works. Now, you'll also note that the case is engraved. All the way around, we have this Calatrava cross motif. So the case is hand finished and hand executed. And you'll note that no chances are taken. The strap is held to the case using screws and bars in view of just how massive and expensive this watch is. And I'm talking millions of dollars, not hundreds of thousands. The use of screws and bars is prescient and much appreciated. There's more going on, because though you can't see it, the name of the watch, Sky Moon Tourbillon, indicates that there is a tourbillon regulator inside this watch, and there is. It's free sprung, it has an overcoil, it is a one minute tourbillon, beating away at 21.6, and it has a 38 to 48 hour power reserve, depending on what the calendar is doing at any given time. Now it also has a third wheel on the drivetrain that's made of 14 karat gold, and which takes somewhere between seven to nine hours to finish just by itself, just that one part. The movement has over 700 parts and 55 jewels. And yes, there is a minute repeater and we're going to hear it now. And it's not just any minute repeater. This minute repeater features cathedral gongs. So where a standard minute repeater gongs encircle the movement once, minute repeater gongs encircle the movement 1.5 times. The result is a richer sound. So we're going to try to set this watch to 1259 because that's optimal for a minute repeater. It gives you the longest chime. Hard to set precisely without precise calibrations on the dial, but I'm going to do my best to get there. Let's see if I got it right. So, perpetual calendar with retrograde date, tourbillon, sky chart, sidereal time, moon phase, minute repeater, all of that in a watch that is considerably smaller than the watch that replaced it. This is 42.8, but when the 6002 arrived in 2013, it was 44. It's a bigger watch. It's tougher to wear. As you can see, my 16 centimeter circumference wrist can absolutely pull this off. I'm at the limit of what's possible, but trust me, if you can, do. This is a watch with no limits. Your wrist may have limits, but this watch has no limits. Reach out to tmasso at thewatchbox.com for purchase and pricing details.